Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Rodavla. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today I will continue part 4 of our BusyBox series. The first command we have to talk about is CT2I hack. CT2I hack offers another program of virtual terminal if it decides that the action is possible. The letters CT2I in Linux, because you will see them quite often, mean teletypewriter, and it's from a time when the world was in transit from physical terminals to virtual terminals. Cut writes to standard output selected parts of each line of each input file, or standard input if no files are given, or if a file name is a hyphen. So basically it cuts out selected parts of a file, like separating the text into columns delimited by the parameters we specified. Also we should keep in mind that the cut command acts on every single line in the file unless instructed otherwise. The date command is used to display the current time in the given format, or set the system date. Date with no arguments prints the current time and date. If given an argument that does not start with a plus sign, date sets the system clock to the time and date specified by that argument. You must have the appropriate privileges to set the system clock. The argument must consist entirely of digits which have the following meaning. Double M is month, double D is day within month, double H is hour, double M is minute, double C are the first two digits of the year and they're optional, double Y are the last two digits of the year, also optional, and double S are seconds, optional as well. DC is a reverse polished desk calculator which supports unlimited precision arithmetic. It also allows you to define and call macros. Normally this series from the standard input. If any command arguments are given to it, they are file names, and this reads and executes the contents of the files before reading from standard input. All normal output is to standard out. All error output is to standard error. A reverse polish calculator stores a number on a stack. Entering a number pushes it on the stack. Arithmetic operations pop arguments of the stack and pushes the results. To enter a number in DC, type the digits with an optional decimal point. Exponential notation is not supported. To enter a negative number, begin the number with underscore. Hyphen cannot be used for this, as it is a binary operator for subtraction. To enter two numbers in succession, separate them with spaces or new lines. These have no meaning as commands. Double D is a command line utility for Unix and Unix-like operating systems, whose primary purpose is to convert and copy files. On Unix, device drivers for hardware, such as hard disk drives, and special device files, such as slash dev slash zero and slash dev slash random, appear in the file system just like normal files. Double D can also read and or write from and to these files, provided that the function is implemented in the respective driver. As a result, Double D can also be used for tasks such as backing up the boot sector of a hard drive and obtaining a fixed amount of random data. The Double D program can also perform conversions on the data as it is copied, including byte order swappings and conversions to and from the ASCII and EBCDIC text encodings. The name Double D is an allusion to the Double D statement found in IBM's job control language, in which the initials stand for data definition. The command syntax resembles the JCL statement more than it does other Unix commands, so the syntax may have been a joke. It was originally intended to convert between ASCII and EBCDIC, and it first appeared in version 5 Unix. The command Dialog CVT deallocates kernel memory and data structures for all unused virtual consoles. If one or more arguments n are given, only the corresponding console slash dev slash ttyn are deallocated. A virtual console is unused if it is not a foreground console, and no process has it open for reading or writing, and no text has been selected on its screen either. Linux kernel modules can provide services called symbols for other modules to use, using one of the export symbol variants in the code. If a second module uses this symbol, that second module clearly depends on the first module. These dependencies can get quite complex. Dep mode creates a list of module dependencies by reading each module under slash lib slash module slash version and determining what symbols it exports and what symbols it needs. By default, this list is written to modules.dep and the binary hash version named modules.dep.bin in the same directory. If file names are given on the command line, only those modules are examined, which is rarely useful unless all modules are listed. That mod also creates a list of symbols provided by modules in the file name modules.symbols and its binary hashed version modules.symbols.bin. Finally, dev mod will output a file name modules.dev name if modules supply special device names, dev names, that should be populated in slash dev on boot by utilities such as systemmd temp files. If a version is provided, then that kernel version's module directory is used rather than the current kernel version as returned by uname hyphen r. DevMem is a program that offers the user access to the physical memory of a device, that's pretty much what it does, and it can both read and write data straight from the physical memory in Linux, bypassing the virtual memory. 
And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website, www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.